I'm going to say hello, everyone. I'm, I'm standing in for uh, the Visible Lady of Faith, uh, the Sunday School lesson, November the 20th, um, uh, 2022. And the subject of the lesson is, We Are God's Handiwork. Uh, it's, it's some really interesting thoughts there, but let's just have a quick word of prayer. Uh, Father God, we ask you to touch our hearts and minds to open to uh, God's handiwork and look at it from all perspectives to encourage each and every one of our hearts that we'll learn something as teachers and also as students. And we just do the perfect handiwork that you set us for. In your name, Jesus, amen. Anyway, uh, the devotional reading is 1 Timothy 2, 1, 8. I was, you know, I'm not going to read, read that in Acts 19 and uh, Revelations uh, 2, 1 through 7. But the lesson itself is in... Uh, Ephesians 2, 1 through 10. And it's it's not that much. So, uh, you know, it, and it's the NIV that I'm reading from. And, uh, you know, I'm Pastor Scott. And, and I encourage everyone to, you know, people say, uh, uh, read the King James. Uh, you know, they, they, they like that one better for their their preference. But I, I'm a person that likes to just get the truth, you know, out of it. So, I read the King James or in the NIV, I read, you know, different English language, you know, and see if they're, see if they're on the same uh, wavelength or same subject or, or how you want to look at it, same perspective. And sometimes, you know, the words, you know, synonyms, anonyms, you know, and all that things in English language, uh, it can get pretty difficult, you know, to sometimes understand. But, but anyway, uh, I, I'm not one of these strict, I'm just, I'm strict in coming to the truth. I'll say that again. I'm very strict. I want to hear the truth. Uh, not with somebody's, this is my interpretation. So, And I'm not saying my interpretation is perfect. And only interpretation it is with perfect again for the mind is, is I have any father, which is Jesus Christ. Anyway, Ephesians 2, 1, 10, it says, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of of the air, which we know the air is, is Satan himself. Or, and, and it says, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. And all of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the carving of our flesh. And oh, I'm sorry, I said carving, craving of our flesh. Let me read the third verse all over again. All of us also lived among them at one time gratifying the craving of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature uh, deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us live with Christ. Even when we were dead in transgressions and by grace, you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in the Christ Jesus for it is by grace you have been saved through the faith and it is not from yourself it is the gift of God not by works so that no one can boast for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now, I read it, but, you know, we are God's handiwork. And if you look at the 10th verse, uh, it says, for we are God's handiwork. And it's, uh, you know, I, I, I have myself personally, I have an issue. When I, I just looked at it and I asked this question at the beginning, uh, who is we? And, and, and if you were a non-believer, you would say, hmm, we, I would include myself in it. And those that are children of God, they say, oh, it's, it's talking to us. Well, in this passage, what Paul wrote, he's really talking to the, the saints. But uh, in, in order to say we are God's handiwork, I, I don't like the inclusion. I like people to understand because the whole entire universe, and if you go to uh, Colossians 1, 16 to 17. And you'll see that, uh, reading that, you'll see that God created everything. 
everything in the universe. So if that's the case, then, uh, so we can provoke thought, uh, God created Satan. Now, man has said, I can't get the head wrapped around it. But say, but wait a minute, did he create evil? No. He created Satan. He was perfect and he was all good, according to the scriptures. And it's also, too, that I believe myself personally, I think everything was created good. I, I was perfectly created and I, every last one of you were created was good. Because if you go into uh, 1 Timothy 2, 1, 8, which I am not going to read that, it's, you know, God's desire was to make, it was set up his creation. He wanted all human beings to be um, saved. Because like, and I, I think it's the fourth verse, and he says he desires all the humans to be saved. And I, and, and I put the word human in because we get caught up in gender. No, it's man. No, it's woman. No, he created woman, man, all animals, everything. It's all his creation. And if, there, if it's not so, then if you believe that there's another God other than the creator, and I'm talking about the one that created everything, that created, you know, uh, the, the man, created the animals, I'm talking about that God. Uh, now, if you don't believe that, then, then it's, it's, we, we can't talk any further, uh, because that's what I believe. And it says, uh, uh, in, in that 10th verse, it says, it says, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. We, we were created, we were meant as, as human beings to do the right thing. To, uh, and then we keep saying, you know, as ministers say, please God. Yes, I'm a minister, but I, I, I don't like saying to please God because we seem to put hands and feet on God instead of just focusing on what he's saying. When you say God is love, focus on the, he's love, he's pure, he's perfect. And that's what we should be trying to do, is do the right thing, is to treat each other with love. I don't care what color your skin is, you know, who you are, what gender you are, and that whole thing. This is a fight within the, as it said in that, uh, let's see, was it second verse in our lesson? Uh, he said, the prince of the air of this, this place. And like, like I said, people have a problem understanding that God made Satan, devil, whatever you want to go by. But he did not make evil. That's something that happened, which I have no answer for. Why did it happen? Uh, this being that he created, just like us, we have free will. I have a choice to do whatever I want. If I want to go rob a bank, I can do that. I want to go and hate, hate my white brother, I can go do that. I can hate my brown, my yellow, whatever brother, I can do that. But I choose not to. Because that's not what God is. So... In this, in this lesson, um, reading from the other commentaries and things in, the, in my research and study, uh, it was really interesting because they related to hospice. Uh, you know, is how some people make it, you know, very few, some people make it out of hospice. So uh, they kiss death or they experience death and they escape death and they had a second chance. This is kind of like the thing that's talked about in the lesson. This is a, a second chance that we were all born into this world. In a, and, you know, we had to, born in this world, and we say sin, or born and we didn't know nothing, you know, as babies. Look at it from a human point of view. We had to learn these things. Our parents, society, teachers, and all, they shape, you know, our experience. So what are we exposed to? And then what are we going to accept as human beings? Are we going to accept of doing the right thing, or we're going to accept, as I heard, when little white lies and stuff like that, you know, we'll just change things so we, we can make life uh, perfect. But uh, it takes too long to, you know, because if you heard me speak before, I, I am a person that if you put me in a football game, I'm going to play by the rules of the football. If you put me in a basketball game, I'm going to play by the rules of the basketball. Now, when you put me in life, I'm going to play by God's rules. But when Jesus told, when they came and said, you know, they tried to trick him saying, you know, uh, uh, who do we pay taxes to? So they trying to get out of taxes. That's what's going on. And, and still government is still doing the same thing, trying to find loopholes and get out to satisfy this flesh as we talked at the beginning of the lesson. Well, here's an interesting thing. There's no loopholes with God. There's no way escaping. But, 
But when I participate in this world, and as uh, I, I think about King David, he, and it said in the passage in the New Testament, it said that David was a man after God's own heart. But David, he did a lot of, shed a lot of blood. Uh, he did a, well, we know the story of David and Goliath. We know who won that battle. And there's one thing is that I'm saying is that even God himself is going to go to war, according to the Bible, with evil, you know, at the end. So, you know, the, uh, the, the battle between Satan and God, <laughs> uh, you know, people keep thinking Satan and God is on the same level. No, you got to remember God created Satan, which was perfect, but Satan chose to go down this evil path and become the prince of this world. Now, we as individuals, yeah, you're going to try to find uh, loopholes and try to say in the Bible contradicts itself and all that other kind of good stuff. But if we push all that aside and just take it for what God, the love he's trying to give you, here's an abundance of love. And I know a lot, of, you know, they like that traditional thing, well, Jesus died on the cross for all our sins. Yes, but let's, let's, let's try to dig into it and try to understand, you know, What's going on in this life? Because we have to get along. We have to learn to get along with one another. Learn to love one another. And, and I'm not talking about bringing the sheep and this propaganda that like Putin and Trump and all this other stuff. And, and some of these, these preachers that are, uh, that are black, white, and they got other hidden agenda. I'm not talking about them. Those are of, just like Satan, they are part of that. But the handiwork that we need to get focused on as the children of God, because times is, is ugly right now. Because this country may end up in a civil war because just some of the things that people are sitting in, and are they truly looking at the truth? And I believe that they are. But the people in this country are hurting so bad, they're trying to find a relief. They're trying to find something to make them happy. I, you, know, hey, you know, which doesn't make any sense to me, but I'm going to say this. Uh, it, why, why do my black skin make white people uncomfortable? I, I, don't, I don't get that. Uh, a, you know, and, it's, and why do I need to sit and tap dance and, and, and everything? It's just the stereotypes that's been over the past. You know, one black individual or person that looks like me does something wrong, and they say everybody does the same thing. And I just heard these comedians that were Chinese, they said the same thing happens to them. And white folks, they got stereotypes about them. And some of the stereotypes they don't like. And some of the stereotypes we don't like. Because I was asked by a, I um, uh, don't want to go too far off of it. I was asked by a white gentleman. He's just, what do I think of the N-word? I don't think very much of it at all. I prefer not, no one to use that word. No one. I don't care in the rap music, nothing. Because there's too many people dying over it. And not only that. When it goes back to the beginning of this lesson, that is tools for Satan to play upon us as human beings. And what I mean by that is that if a white person sees that a person is using it, then what's wrong? And, and that's their rationale, which doesn't make any sense to me, but that's their rationale. Well, how come we can't use it? <laughs> I prefer not to use the N-word. I prefer I have three daughters. I did not allow anybody to call them the B words, and I did not allow the F bombs and all that stuff in my house. Did not allow, no, it's not happening. Because when you do that, you're inviting that world that it was talking about at the beginning of the of the of this lesson in Ephesians. You know, that is the disobedience. That is the chaos and, and the things that's going on, you know, with our flesh. We say it's okay. No, it's not okay. It's not okay for the N-word. It's not okay to call people out of their names. It's not, it's not okay to call a disabled. And it's not okay for us to ignore homeless people. I said, when I say we, I have to work on myself too as well because I, I, I need to sit down and pray, okay, God, what can I do to help? But anyway, uh, as far as I want to be sure that I don't miss the point here in the 10th, in the 10th verse here, it says, well, we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works. To do good works. That's what the intention was. To do good works. And, you know, and, and the way things are going out, we, we, we lean back to, I say the man or humans as a general, we're leaning back. Well, 
is so much chaos. The war in Ukraine, the, the, the politics, the, the people just getting up and seeing certain things that it, it don't make any sense. Because, you know, like Herschel Walker, he makes no sense to me. You know, because it doesn't, it doesn't fit the test of what God is. God is not the author of creation. That's the, the air. That's Satan of this world. That's evil. If you don't want to use the word Satan. Evil. Because if you stop and think about it, it is sad in the media that, that you would turn around and say, if I have a black person up here, I'm going to vote for them because their skin is black. <laughs> I'm going to vote for them if, if, they're, if they're following the principles of what God has set up. I'm going to test them with the spirits of God. And that's with love, joy, peace, no lying, you know, and et cetera. And, you know, it was so fascinating about it. Um, it's, it's, as I'm sitting here thinking about it, it's so difficult to communicate because I know someone out there saying, well, what about this here? Well, if you do this here, or they start digging up dirt on me or someone in my family to demonize us, so you're no better than anybody. So it's like crabs in a bucket. Everybody's trying to pull everybody down. I say, stop it. Let's start looking at love and see how far it goes. And I think tapping into love, we can find out if we're patient enough, God will protect us as we continue to, to, to work in love. That the grace and the mercy, as he stated in the, in, the, in the lesson, he has so much abundance of it and he'll take care of us. Because I would have to say I'm, uh, you know, I'm in my 70s now. And if God allowed me to escape a lot of things, because there's some things I'm not proud of in my life. And yeah, and by the face, and you know, if you're trying to look and see if I was into drugs and if I was a pimp and all this other stuff, no, I'm a different type of a black man. I had a fortunate, I had a father and a mother that loved me dearly, and I was blessed. And that, and that abundance that I'm trying to tell you about, it is great. It is really great because I was blessed that I didn't have to. I, I, I'm not worried about being homeless. I'm not worried about I have family members that's on drugs and strung out. I mean, we got our problems, but it's a lot of things. I escaped those things. So, and if you want to turn around and say, well, you escaped it. Yeah, you're not like me and I'm in the street. But I have friends that I walk with them because I told them, I said, I'm naive. I, I, I need you to educate me. What's in your world? If you don't mind sharing it, because I'm not going to demonize them. We need to stop it. Stop judging people because we don't have the right to judge no one. So, if we're going to be great handy work for God, if we're going to be shining like it says in, it said in the verse, I'm going to read it one more time and we're going to come to an end. It says, we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do, to do. We're created to do good works. All we have to do is accept his ways and to start doing good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now, also, in, uh, as I said in First uh, Timothy 2, if you read that, you know, God's intention was for all human beings to accept him. So it's our choice to accept it or not. It's our choice if we want, you know, what we decide to do. So, but still at the same time, you know, they say make America great again. Uh, that's, that's, that's a subject within itself. And it's toxic. People starting to realize it. Because over time, just like uh, Pharaoh, when the children of Israel was freed out of Egypt, it took time to, and patience for God to do his works to relieve us from this battle. So I'm not sure if we can, as America is going to, uh, not America, I keep saying it, United States of America, because he says make America great, and you know, Canada is America, it's South America, and you got Mexico, and you got South America down there. There's all Americans, so on. Would that make America great is confusing to me. But I want to leave this here with you, that 10th verse. Read that 10th verse. We're designed. We're, we're supposed to be helping one. We, if we're working of God, we, we don't work in the loopholes. You know, we're, we're not sitting here. Uh, we're going to treat our white brother, our yellow brother, our brown brother, whatever color brother. We, we're all, we are all created by God. Everything was created by God. That's why I bought it. He created Satan. He created each and every one of us. Now, it is our choice to leave our handiwork. And our handiwork is what we decide to imprint while we're here. So just pay attention to that. 
and uh, let's let's do what's right.